Ah, no reira. Ah, kia ora tātou, i rūti tu manaki tangu tu tātou ariki. Matua tama waira tapu ngāne hera pono te maanga he teo tuko mai ai nea ake nea ai. Ai, so kia ora tātou. We are in a new month. We are actually in the last month. Uh, as we head closer and closer to the 8th of November. So this is the first day of November Fano, which means that we are actually seven days away from celebrating 100 years of the arrival of the Wairua Tapu. Nō reira, mi atu ki, uh, ki a tātou, tiwi mōruhu o te rā uh, tātou katoa tiwi Māori. Um, our big day is uh, shortly coming close. So tonight... Wanting to go back into some quarter or some of the pre quarter that took place uh, prior to the arriving of the Wairua Tapu. So, uh, yesterday we talked a little bit about some of the unfinished legacy, and it's actually funny that some of the stories that took place before the 8th of November actually give us a bit of detail in terms of how this mahi is to be fulfilled. So, the story of the two whales. This took place. On uh, March, the 17th of March, 1918. So we're a couple of weeks away before the actual 8th of November event happened. So basically the story goes like this, Fano, Ratana and his Fano, they are out fishing. And while they are out fishing, there's a, they come to a point where they're about to pack up and, and go home. But Ratana spots from the distance this huge wave that's starting to form and as this wave got closer and closer the wave broke on the shores and from the wave um, a huge whale uh, revealed itself and so this was the first whale that came through and this whale actually uh, came to shore and pretty much had a peaceful death and later on another wave comes through and a second wave comes in on that. Uh, a second whale comes in on that wave, uh, and that whale arrives onto the shores, and it starts to battle, and it's bleeding profusely. And so, before it dies, it actually goes through the struggle and painful process. Um, some of the other interesting things that took place at that time was a, a whole heap of fish came in following behind these big whales. So Ratan and his Fano began setting out their nets and grabbing as many fish as they could and so there's these two whales on the shore one of the whales Taupo Tiki Urumi Ratana uh, is able to cart back to Ratana and some of the whale fat is actually used later on uh, it's stored as oil and then later on as Ratana receives his mission by the Wairua Tapu it's used to um, keep oil and, and light fires aflame, uh, light the la keep the lanterns lit in the night time. Uh, that was when Ratana Pa started to quickly grow into a um, uh, a bit of a village. And so he used the whale fat to pretty much um, keep the village alight at night time. And so another interesting thing happens to the second whale. So Ratana, uh, as he approaches the second whale, he is overcome by the power of the Wairua Tapu. And in the overcoming of the Wairua Tapu, he actually etches his initials to in the underbelly of the, of the second whale. So the TWR, he etches into the underbelly of the whale. And then he starts to whakamoimiti. Um, and through that whakamoimiti, the whale regains its life and starts to go back into the ocean. And so, basically the story of the two whales is this whānau. <clears throat> One represented Te Aripa, the other whale represented Te Omika. So when the first whale, the whale that represented Te Aripa, came onto the shore, it actually died peacefully. And when we reflect on what actually happened to Te Omika, the second whale that came through, it actually went through a painful process before it before it died and so this is when we look at the mahi that Ratana went through in the Turi Wairua that mahi was quite simple it was quite easy he completed that in 10 years now the second the second part of his mahi the Turi Tangata was quite a hard one and he actually never got to a point where he was able to complete it and this is I guess what the whales were trying to tell us 
that the mahi of the wairua would be easy, but the mahi of uh, the kiko kiko, the tiri tio waitangi, me te mana motuhake, was actually going to be quite a challenging, quite a hard process. So far note, I, uh, Auntie Carleen's talked about going down to Falaihu. So if you're going on that hiding up, you might hear a bit more of this corridor. But basically, that's the story there, Fano. Two whales came to the shores uh, on the 17th of March. One died peacefully, one struggled before it passed away. Um, and quite interesting, the one that struggled uh, revived and went back out into the shores. And so, when we look at the incomplete mahi of Ratana, we can get from the story that actually the mahi of the Ture Tangata is, is very, very hard. We are going to struggle through this whānau, and struggle we have. Um, even to this day, we are still struggling to achieve uh, that component of Ratana's unfinished legacy. So, um, Norera uh, te whānau, just, a, just giving a bit of a, a little glimpse, and as we get closer and closer, we'll try and feed bits and pieces of important kōrero that feeds into this unfinished legacy of Tau Pōtsuki Urumi Ratana. So, Norera. Nga mana ki tanga o ihoa, uh, ki rungi a tātou katoa, matua tama wairau tapu, anihera pono i te maanga i te utuko mai, ai nei ake nei ai.